Hello and welcome to the webcast on the IFRS Foundation's Due Process Handbook review and resulting proposed amendments to the Due Process Handbook. Uh, my name is Sam Prestige and I am a member of the technical staff here at the IFRS Foundation. Uh, I'm delighted today to be joined by Mr Alan Bella, who is the chair of the IFRS Foundation's Due Process Oversight Committee, or DPOC for short. Hello, Alan. Thanks very much for joining me. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Jolly good. Um, would you care to go over some of the work of the Due Process Oversight Committee and what we can find in the Due Process Handbook? Of course, Sam. Thank you. The DPOC is a standing committee of the trustees that is responsible for monitoring the boards and the interpretation committee's compliance with due process procedures, which are in turn explained in the due process handbook. The DPOC also reviews and if necessary, amends the due process procedures in the light of changing due process conventions and comments from stakeholders. The due process handbook sets out the due process procedures that apply to the board and the Interpretations Committee. Thank you, Alan. In this presentation on the Due Process Handbook Review, Alan and I will start by looking at the background to the review and our timeline and next steps. We will then move on to look at the key proposed amendments, firstly, relating to the effects analysis process. And then, Alan, you will look at our proposed amendments relating to agenda decisions. Yes, thank you, Sam. I will go over the proposed changes relating to agenda decisions of the Interpretations Committee, clarifying their role and status, setting out the timing of their application, and providing the International Accounting Standards Board, which will be board from short from now on, with its own agenda decision due process as well. Thanks, Alan. Uh, we will also briefly go over other matters addressed in the review, which include matters of educational material, adding projects to the board's work plan, the role of the advisory council, and clarifying the DPOC's oversight of the IFRS taxonomy. Alan. Starting with the background to the due process handbook review, the last substantive amendments were undertaken in 2013 and the DPOC thought it appropriate time to review the handbook to ensure that it remains fit for purpose. The DPOC also felt it was particularly important to consider developments in the boards and interpretations committee processes, and the DPOC was also mindful of the findings of independent perception research that the trustees commissioned in 2017. We consulted stakeholders early in the project, as you can see in the first half and third quarter of 2018, before taking detailed recommendations to the DPOC in October 2018, and then again in January 2019. After reviewing draft versions of the document in March 2019, the DPOC agreed to the invitation to comment document with a 90-day comment letter period in March 2019. After the comment letter deadline, the DPOC will consider the comment letter analysis in October 2019. The aim is to publish a revised due process handbook as early as we can in 2020. So moving on to look at the key proposed amendments, and we will start with effects analysis. Effects analysis is the board's process for assessing the likely effects of a new or amended IFRS standard. That is undertaken as the new or amended standard is developed. For a major standard, this leads to the publication of a separate effects analysis report alongside the issued standard. For other standards or amendments, the effects analysis is embedded into the basis for conclusions that is published alongside the new or amended standard. The proposed amendments to the handbook clarify the scope of the board's analysis, differentiate the process of the analysis from how it is reported, and also emphasize how the process and reporting takes place throughout the standard setting process. The proposed amendments reflect the developments to the board's assessment of the likely effects and how these are reported, taking into consideration the effects analysis that was performed in connection with the main standards, the major standards, IFRS 16 leases and IFRS 17 insurance contracts. Recommendations of the Effects Analysis Consultative Group, or EACG for short. Uh, the EACG was an in independent group of experts that was established by the IFRS Foundation trustees to make recommendations on the board's process for assessing the likely effects. Also taking into consideration feedback received from the Advisory Council 
which was specifically consulted on the effects analysis process in February of 2018. The proposed amendments made in this area seek to reflect the board's current practice and emphasize that the principal focus of the board's analysis remains on assessing how financial statements are likely to change, whether those changes will improve the, the quality of financial statements, and also whether those changes are justifiable from a cost-benefit perspective. However, the board also has regard to effects on long-term financial stability where relevant. When assessing the likely effects and the board may assess specific economic effects where relevant also. Now, having regard to financial stability in the context of the board's analysis of effects is connected to the idea that IFRS standards provide high quality, transparent and comparable financial information, which enhances financial stability in financial markets around the world. And this idea is also found in the IFRS Foundation's mission statement. It is also very important to understand that the effects analysis process is very much ongoing throughout the standard setting process. The proposed amendments to the handbook uh, do also look to more clearly differentiate between two related but different matters. Uh, as discussed already, the process of assessing the effects and the effects analysis report that is published on issuance of a major standard or amendment. Uh, this is now to avoid giving an impression that the board's analysis of the effects takes place only at the end of the standard setting process when the effects analysis report is published, as opposed to being ongoing throughout the standard setting process. We will now move on to the proposed amendments uh, relating to agenda decisions, which Alan will take us through. Thank you, Alan. First, we will look at how the proposed amendments seek to clarify the role of agenda decisions. And let's begin by looking at the background to agenda decisions of the Interpretations Committee. If the Interpretations Committee decides not to recommend standard setting in response to a submitted question, it publishes an agenda decision to explain its decision. In many cases, the committee publishes an agenda decision because, in the committee's view, IFRS standards provide enough information for any entity to determine its accounting. Agenda decisions are subject to due process. For example, tentative agenda decisions are exposed for comment with a minimum of 60-day comment period. Agenda decisions often include information to help entities apply the standards. This is information explaining how the application principles and requirements in the standards apply to the questions submitted. Agenda decisions, including any explanatory information, do not add or change requirements in the standards and therefore do not have the same status of IFRS standards. Thus, the board has confirmed is the appropriate approach. The proposed amendments in this area take into consideration the information about the agenda decisions currently available in the handbook. The DPOC agreed that the proposed amendments should seek to clarify the objectives of explanatory material in agenda decisions, which is to improve the consistent application of the standards and the nature of explanatory materials, which is to explain how the applicable principles and requirements in IFRS standards apply to the fact pattern in the agenda decision, and that the explanatory material cannot add to or change the requirements in IFRS standards. Now, moving on to look at the timing of application of agenda decisions. As explained, agenda decisions cannot add to or change requirements in IFRS standards. However, explanatory material might provide new information for entities. As a result of this, an entity might determine that it needs to change its accounting policy and thus might take time. Some may view that the new information in the agenda decisions may take effect immediately. However, the board expressed the view that entities should be entitled to sufficient time to consider the new information found in an agenda decision and determine any change in accounting policy and to implement that change. The proposed amendments to the handbook reflect the DPOC wanting to explain this view relating to the timing of applicable agenda decisions in the due process handbook. 
Finally, relating to agenda decisions, I will explain now the proposed amendments to provide the board with an agenda decision due process tool equivalent to the Interpretations Committee agenda decision. Looking at the Interpretations Committee process, the committee receives a question from an interested stakeholder on the application of IFRS standards. For each question submitted, the committee is required to consult and consider at a public meeting whether to add a project to its standard setting agenda, which might include issuing an IFRIC interpretation. If, committee, if the committee decides not to recommend standard setting in response to a submitted question, it publishes an agenda decision to explain its decision. Now we can look at the board's process. For example, the board may become aware of application questions through discussions at a transition resource group. The board would then consider if there is a need for standard setting to address the question. If the board concludes that standard setting is not required, it currently has no formal mechanism to publish material that could explain how to apply the principles and requirements in the standard. The proposed amendments to the handbook provide the board with the ability to publish a board agenda decision. The idea is that the board could make a decision not to undertake standard setting, but at the same time publish an agenda decision containing explanatory material that could provide additional information to stakeholders and support consistent application. Material contained in an agenda decision would also be more widely disseminated to stakeholders, more readily retrievable, and have greater permanence than other mechanisms currently available to the board when it, it decides not to engage in standard setting. It is important to be clear that the proposed amendments are not supporting the committee's existing processes or supplanting that process for dealing with application questions and stakeholders will continue to submit questions directly to the Interpretations Committee. The board is also expected to publish its own agenda decisions only rarely. Thank you, Alan. Finally, we'll discuss some of the other issues dealt with in the proposed amendments. We'll start with the categorization and review of different types of educational material. The current requirements were written in contemplation of the educational materials being produced by the Foundation at the time they were developed and do not specifically address some of the newer types of materials being produced, such as webinars and articles, developed to support the implementation of new IFRS standards. The proposed amendments specify three broad categories of educational material to capture the current types being produced and are sufficiently generic to accommodate different types of educational material about IFRS standards that may be produced in the future. The DPOC also proposes to revise the specified minimum level of review required for each category of educational material. Currently, not all material is required to be reviewed by board members. Given that the material now being produced is more focused on supporting those applying and using IFRS standards than in the past, the DPOC proposes that all educational material should be subject to at least some level of board member review. We're now going to discuss adding projects to the board's work plan and amendments in that area of the handbook. The DPOC proposes amending the handbook to refine the requirements regarding the consultation required before the board adds projects to its work plan in order to refine, streamline them and make them more logical. The amendments are not intended to reduce the input that the board is required to seek or receive. Rather, they are intended to adjust the timing of the consultation to make its effectiveness and efficiency improved. Currently, outside the five yearly agenda consultation that the handbook requires, the board is required to consult the Accounting Standards Advisory Forum and the IFRS Advisory Council before adding a project to its standard setting program. The board is currently not required to consult before adding a project to its research program, even if that project was not considered in the previous agenda consultation. 
This also means that the board must consult before moving a project from its research program to its standard setting program, even if that research project was added to the work plan in the previous agenda consultation. The effect of the proposed amendments to the handbook in this area will be to first require the board to consult before formally adding a major project to the work plan, either the research program or the standard setting program, if that project was not specifically contemplated in the most recent agenda consultation. And second, not require the board to duplicate the consultation in an agenda consultation when it moves a project from the research program to the standard setting program in those cases where the project was already specifically contemplated in the most recent agenda consultation. These amendments should ensure that the board continues to obtain the necessary formal input about the strategic direction and resources and balance in its work program. However, they would also do so without specifying duplicative formal consultation requirements. We are also refining how the handbook describes the role of the IFRS Advisory Council. This is as since the last review of the handbook, the role of the IFRS Advisory Council has moved to that of a strategic advisory body, with the introduction of ASAF as the technical advisory body to the board. And finally, the handbook will be amended to reflect the DPOC's role in overseeing the due process related to the IFRS taxonomy. The due process relating to the IFRS taxonomy is included as an annex to the main handbook. That will continue, but the process of reviews of changes to the taxonomy and of the DPOC's role in doing that will be refined. Thank you very much, Alan. That concludes our walk through the proposed amendments resulting from the due process handbook review. Uh, Alan, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. I've been delighted to be here. Thank you, Alan. Uh, we hope it's been an informative session and we'll see you soon. Thank you.